the Tijuca National Rainforest is the largest urban forest in the world. And people come there from all over the world to see this place with two cons and wonderful, massive trees and waterfalls. And so it's a rainforest. And yet there are squatters living in the rainforest. And there's a hundred or more, 28 houses that have been built by the people themselves trying to find a way to eke out a living, but with no municipal services, no sewage treatment, no garbage pickup. And so not only was it a problem in the beginning for the community themselves because they're on this hill and all their stuff just washes down into the river and despoils the beaches and gets caught on the trees but then tourists start coming who are gawking essentially they're curious like how do these people live in this favela this slum and they then bring their own burden thinking oh i'm helping i'm going to eat in their restaurant i'm going to bring in my own water bottles and coke bottles and and they end up producing an enormous amount of waste that now the community itself can't handle because it couldn't even handle the amount it was producing. So, problem. In 2007, when a um tourist... I do a caminhada ecológica. E, e as mulheres da comunidade é, trabalham com a, com a culinária local. E, e aí, ele, um dos turistas queria tomar banho na, na cachoeira. E eu disse que não poderia tomar banho, porque estava poluída e precisava é, resolver alguma forma da, da questão do lixo, a questão do esgoto do, da comunidade. We were working in Niterói, another slum in Brazil, and we'd been building biodigesters with the community out of local materials, which is one of the things we do. We teach people, oh, you got a water tank? We can retrofit it and turn it into so any water tank we can use. But there was a need at a school there to have larger biodigesters for the sheer number of uh, young people in this favela school up the hill. So I imported molds from China, steel molds, where you could pour cement and make a durable, massive digester that could handle 100 people. I invited Otavio to come and build with me because that's our model. And he came and he became an expert working for the other community and said, I'd like one for my community. And then you're, of course, that was the intent, but you, you don't impose on people. You want to be invited by people who are as enthusiastic as you are. So we got a pickup truck and we put the molds and took them over to his place, put them out on the roof. The community came out and we said, hey, we're going to build together this week. Let's do this. And everybody's doing a kind of job training. So there's an interest not only in the effects of what this technology can do, but because it's construction work, people are learning valuable life skills for other things, for rainwater catchment tanks, for uh, any, any water holding tank, any plumbing, any kind of welding work. So you're realizing you're doing job creation, technology training, and you're solving a problem at the same time. O, o momento, assim, quando falou de, de construir o biodigestor, né? Uh, as pessoas ficavam assim, será, é, será que vai funcionar? Será que não vai funcionar? Uh, como é uma comunidade muito isolada, né? então assim, é muito difícil de ter o conhecimento dessas tecnologias que funcionam. E aí, uh, no momento que foi colocado os restos de, de alimento dentro da, da, do biodigestor, e, e aquilo uh, transformou em gás, e aí quando acendeu o o fogo, né, da, da, da primeira vez, uhum. que saiu aquela labareda de fogo, as pessoas ficaram assim, nossa, que maravilha, que ótimo, está funcionando. Então, ah, começaram a acreditar que era possível fazer essa transformação do alimento em gás. Ela ela está tá num processo né de, de, de funcionamento que as pessoas trazem... A, é, a cooperativa ela está no, no caminho da, da comunidade. Então, as pessoas precisam jogar o seu lixo num compartimento próximo da, da cooperativa. E aí, a, quando elas vêm com a, as sacolas de, de lixo, né, de, com lixo orgânico, aí leva para a cooperativa, aí lá é, é pesado, e aí vê o que, o que, o, o que equivale em relação à, à troca do, de pão, e aí a quantidade de, de, de material orgânico é trocado por pães. Otavio has done something that in all of our work in over 60 countries with these type of community-based biogas processes, nobody else had thought of. We were always thinking, how do you distribute gas equitably? So you give me a bucket of food waste, how much gas do you get? And what do you get people to, to move that heavy food waste from one place to another? And he's on a hill. He said, well, they're coming up the hill anyway to buy bread. But what if they don't have to bring cash because it's a very poor community? What if they bring their food scraps and they get a workout? 
and then they hand him a bucket and he hands them two loaves or three loaves. They'll weigh the food waste and say, oh, you should get four loaves of bread today because you produced a lot of food waste. So this exchange, which is a kind of bartering method that can be quantified by weight, turns out to be the most equitable way to incentivize. And why did he do this? He said, rain is free, that's the water. Flour is subsidized by the government, so it's not a big cost, but fuel is very expensive. And when you have to truck it up the hill into Tijuca and get it in this four kilometer pathway down to the favela, which is informal, doesn't have infrastructure. Now, just baking the bread, cooking the meals for the tourists, that's where your costs run and then you can't afford to run your restaurant. Now, the gas is free. It's being subsidized by the people themselves and turning a bad into a good. So they say, well, then we can give food away. And this is why the model works so well. O, o gás a gente utiliza na cozinha para assar o, os bolos, o, os pães, né? os produtos que, que a gente produz na cozinha através da culinária. O líquido que sai da, da, do biodigestor a gente consegue colocar na, nas hortas comunitárias ou a própria vegetação que, quando é o excedente, absolve nas na próprias plantações locais. O Vale Encantado é, é uma incubadora de ideias que funcionam e que podem ser replicadas em outros lugares.